Yo guys, what is up? A BKCK here, um, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a Twitch TV subscriber emoticon. Um, quite fun to do, and they are pretty quick, or they can take a bit longer if you want to take that extra care of them. But uh, I'm going to be showing you how you can make it from a face a bit like this. So let's imagine this is a streamer's face that they want you to make an emoticon out of. Um, how you can cartoon it, which like is one of the most popular ones. This is not real life anyway, but we'll still make a solid kind of cartoony look one because it's got some good shadows on it. That's why we're using it um, as an example. And then I'll show you how to save it, how to save the files uh, from Photoshop, and how to resize them. A good way that I found to resize them. It's a Mac on program. A program on Mac even, <laughs> um, and it's not bad. It's as I say, it's for Mac. There will be other ones for Windows, surely. But it's how it's the Mac way, where it's nothing amazing. So I'm sure a Windows program uh, to do with images will have it. Um, so yeah, we've got this image here. We're gonna open Photoshop. So let's do that. Uh -huh. So basically, whilst this opens, we've got a big image like this, and we are wanting to turn it into a small emoticon, something a bit like this, kapow, or the face. Um, also, just to mention, I have chosen an image, oh, <laughs> and it has the whole face, you can see, no cropping on it. If I was to pick a picture that had cropping, like this where the head just chops off that is not as good of a, an emo um, in my opinion and well everyone will think that but basically that's what that does there but then this one is the whole head so uh, there are a few examples so that we can get into it and let's close this we're going to do file new we're going to do 112 by 112 now you could actually go bigger than this whilst you're working on the image, but I just work at the base image, zoom in, it is a bit, it is pixelated, but it's still usable. So you're going to copy and paste your image in, so I literally went here, uh, wherever the image was here, right clicked it, copy image, went here, selected a layer, press command V, and then press Command T, so Command T, and that's transform. And you're gonna hold Shift on the right, on one of the corners, and drag it down until you get the whole head into position. So this is nothing special about this, emote, and it's not gonna be used for anything. But I'm just getting the size right here, and using it as, as an example for you guys. That's it. So we've got this here. We we'll go to about 300, maybe even more, but that's fine. Um, normally, because I'm quite lazy, I just use the eraser to go around it, at least very roughly, and clean it up after with the mask tool, the lasso tool. But just to make things quick for this, I am literally going to erase out. If you want to take more time with yours by masking it, then go for it. I mean, a mask does make for better outlines and a cleaner finish, but when it's so small as an emoticon, it's pretty much not noticeable, and you can clean up the stroke if you use a stroke, which I will get onto after, like later on in the video. So I'm just rubbing all this out. If you want, you can uh, make the brush size smaller by pushing the uh, left square bracket. And yeah, let's erase some more just here. Da -da -da. Let's say I'm not really bothered about this, this is never going to be used. 
So it can be rubbish, um, but let's make this a bit smaller. Boom. Boom. You get the idea. So there's my head. Um, perfectly not clipped or anything like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer by clicking this here. And we're going to draw lines. So what I do is I go to the brush. And, oh, it's not actually there right now. So hopefully I'll find it. I can't remember which type of brushes it was. Here we go. What was that? Kali Graphic Brushes. And I think I clicked the 7 one. Uh, so which has kind of got a bit of an angle to it, but it makes it feel a bit more flowy. Make sure the hardness is on 100%. I've put the size on, I think I'll put it on 2%, maybe even 3 Let's try that on. Uh, we can adjust it for different areas. So I think the outside, I'll go around. So this is on the new layer. I'm just going to... Oh. First off, before you do that, make sure your colour is black, your primary colour. And start, start drawing around. Now, I'm using the brush tool because I feel that I can get it done pretty quickly in the brush tool that's half, you know, decent. Alright, I'm just going to rush this really. Um, this really is bad, but yeah. Um, but I'm basically defining the shape, which is quite important because, as I say, it is going to be super small, is the emoticon. And that could have done, that's like really badly shaped up there, but you know. Whatever you do, you just take your time with curves, and if you need to try to, like, Redo a bit, command Z, and do it again. So yep, yeah, once you've got that, you can start doing more to it. So, you want to start defining like the nose a bit, um, like so, a bit like that, which is not amazing, but yeah, the eyes, best you can. Now, I did say I would lower the um, size of the brush, it'll do that now, just make it a 2, I'm going to zoom in a bit more to 500% just to get in there a bit better, and we are going to do this, so basically you're drawing him out as such, which is pretty cool. Um, you maybe don't want to go to as much detail as me, well, in some cases you do, um, doesn't matter if you're perfect with the actual shape, you know, of outlines, because this will actually be seeable, you'll be just drawing over it after. So yeah. Boom. Alright, so we have that kind of done. Um you looking for any characteristics in the face. I mean you can do like you don't have to you can we're gonna do that with shadow anyway. But yeah, uh, let's do this ear. I think the ear is an important one right now. Um you can see it's forming here. That looks pretty cool. So, we've got this so far. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pick the colour selector tool. We're going to hold until we find kind of what you call a mid-tone, where it's like, not the lightest, which is probably about here, which is quite a weird colour. Then the darkest, which is like here ish. You don't want it too dark, but you you know you want it to blend nicely. So we'll find the mid tone, which I think is about this. Now that will select it there. What you're gonna do is create a new layer again. 
make sure it's under your uh, outline for you. The brush can be just normal, put the hard hardness up to 100 if you're selecting one that's like this. Um, have it lower than that, about 12, sure. You're actually going to draw over it all. Um, the skin. So this is the whole skin colour. We're just drawing over the skin. Bam, bam, bam. Like this. And if you go out of the outline, like I did, I didn't even mean to do that as well. But uh, you just rub it out. And it's not going to rub out the black lines because it's on a totally different layer. So you can clean it up as you need. Boom, boom, boom. Done. Then we, we can just, uh, where, we, where we know we won't need it. So we've got like the moustache here. You don't even need to rub this out if you don't want. Because you're going to be painting over it later. But if you want, you can rub out the other bits just to help you picture where things are. Make sure your hardness is at 100%. That's something I forgot. Just so it doesn't leave any extra pixels anywhere. Like that. So I think you can see the moustache is there. You can see the mouth is here. Yep. And you can see the moustache here. Um, and then you've got the eye. There it is for now. Let's say we didn't have to, but we've done it. Anyway, so you've got that. And now we're going to create the shadow of this skin. Um, so literally, you're going to put your layer into multiply. We're clicking that whilst on that layer. And you're going to have the same colour selected, but just make it darker a bit. Just do whatever you think. Make the brush a little bit bigger. Yep. And you're going to turn down the opacity down to about 50%, I think. Why is that not? That's why it's not. I am on. Right, that's fine. Sorry about that. I, I was on the eraser just then, so yeah, make sure you're on the brush. And we're going to use, so if you like, make that invisible. If you look at the colours here, so we've got the shadow in this eye. We've got it here, mm -hmm. and a little bit over here, and here. So, the light is coming this way, definitely. And it looks like there's a light on it coming that way as well. Um, so, we're going to go here. We've got this mainly, which is very dark. One sec, there we go. Um, and if you think the colour is too dark to what you're doing, um, you can just decrease the opacity to make it less dark if you get me so uh yeah and then you're just gonna continue where you're doing maybe have some of the nose on that side of the nose under the nose have it all down here right there But yeah, I forgot to make the um, eyebrows. I've got so it's eyebrowless, which is a bit weird uh, for me. I mean, I can draw this on very quickly. So this is the good part about it. So because it's on all on separate layers, it doesn't get affected by each other. Um, so what we're gonna do? We're gonna have to go back to this seven layer. Uh, this one looks kind of weird, and we'll take this back to a two size, 
we're just gonna without doing that change the that to there in fact cancel what you can do is you can just switch the color so we'll take the white one and use that black so we haven't used the white so we still have the other color if we need it for shadow which we do so that's why i said yeah let's do it <laughs> um all right and we go around here around here boom so we've got the eyebrows drawn now and that's on the outline layer so make sure it is when you do that and now you have your eyebrows and now you have brown, brown eyebrows which doesn't really matter for now so we'll go back to here so if you click this little arrow icon it'll switch this back to your main and we can continue i think it was a 12 it was like this brush 12 had yeah, whatever boom and if we go back here we can see there's more shadow coming up here and fading out a bit there so we'll try to recreate that the best we can so we'll click on the shadow layer and we'll have this shadow going up here a bit um what you can do is if you want you can then to fade it more because that's like not faded very well you can either do two things so if you just have that going a bit longer like further than you want it get the eraser tool put the hardness on zero percent but nope and the opacity a bit less you can click a few times and it kind of fades it out and you can do that again here if you want so if you the more times you click the more times you see like it gets rid of the line so you can use that to smoothen things out a bit like that so that shadow is not very strong so we want it turn up the opacity a bit more a bit like that maybe yep that looks cool then we're going to do the same we're going to create highlight colours so we've got this colour here but then we want it brighter so we're going to go higher and just make sure it is a nice bright colour yep this is again going to be multiply in fact no you don't want it to be multiply, you want it to be screen, I think. Yeah. Turn down the opacity a bunch. I'm going with 42% there. And you just basically draw around where you want it. If you want, remember, use this for reference. So it's bright all here, fades here a bit, and bright on this very edge. And maybe some highlight just above the eyebrow. Um, so let's do that. So again, what we're going to do is bring it down here a bit. Bring that there. Bring that there a bit. Uh, bring this around along here. Ba -ba 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 Boom to that. I just had that really light that uh, something a bit like that and then what was it another a bit of highlight here a bit um, and basically that all looks terrible but then you get the eraser you start to blend it in a bit like so this needs blending in as well. Um, I mean that kind of works, let's undo that actually. Oh shit, I, uh, I didn't preview the undos, so that's my bad. You have that there, you have all this, this is all quite crisp still. Um, yep, 
go back to the shadow a bit. Or is this a bit? this a little bit oh, it's cool and it's really starting to take take depth I guess maybe this is a little bit of harsh still so we can go to the brush tool extend the color a bit go back to the brush and erase where we don't where we want it to blend and boom that's blended fine already and it really gives shape, it gives you this curve, and it's just, well, nice, and I'm actually pretty impressed with it. So yeah, so you got that shadow, that's all good. Um, then here, the ear is dark, I don't know why, talked in a weird accent then. Um, we're gonna go here, I'm gonna bring back a really, really dark brown. We could even add it to the shadow layer. Let's go to the brush and literally, in fact, we want even more than that. I want to bring the brush size down though, just to make it a bit easier. Make it even darker. Darker. Oh, that's why. I don't know what that layer is. Nothing, I don't think. Bit like that, and then remember, so if you extend it a bit and go like that, start to raise it, you can blend it in a bit, and boom, that looks pretty good so far. Yeah, so far. Um, we can maybe blend this in a bit. I've honestly never really used this blend technique, but it is actually really nice. That actually works really well. <coughs> So this was literally made of solid colours. Um, so it's tied off like that. And we have got that, which is just purely going off the main image. Now is where it gets a bit either picky, like tricky picky, <laughs> or it gets, it looks very simple. So we're gonna do the moustache now, like the stubble. Um, we're going to pick the colour that is on here, so we go here, and we pick the colour, drop a tool, that's almost black there, you see, so you want it to be a realistic brownie colour, even something like that might do, we'll see, anyway, get rid of them, put all them back in, get the brush, Make it a bit smaller again, just to prevent as much cleanup. And you brush everywhere it is. Boom, 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 boom. Don't worry, I'm going out the lines, but I'll just clean it up after. Go here, go hardness full, bring down the pixel size to about three. Yep. And I'll pass it back to 100 because she had it so low for the blending. And you can do this kind of in really any order because they're all different layers. They don't affect each other. Um, we actually want to also brush this bit. Right. And boom. What are we looking for? Brush. Right, and we've got the brush here. Boom, boom, boom. Clean it up. That's cool. And we'll get rid of all them for a second. We'll get the colour of the lips. And as you can see here, it's quite dark here and then bright here. So we'll go for a mid tone ish here. Yep. I'm going to create a new layer again. 
gonna get rid of that. And then we are going to brush some more. We're basically gonna brush these all red. And raise it where we don't want. And we and, oh, and on the brush, not the eraser. I think it's is it only on the bottom? It is a bit on the top. Okay. Well, you can either be picky or you don't have to pick it. That doesn't really matter. Just do that sort of thing. That looks cool. And then we'll erase it off here. And boom, you have your defined lips. And finally, we're going to do the eyes, which again, a new layer. Then you're going to... Um, I only did one circle, actually, for this, because it looks like it's quite hard to define. We can try to define it, though. We've got the brush. We've got this. We've got hardness. We've got... Two sides pixel. Oh, we need the back black colour even. See, it's really dark. Um, there's almost no point with that. With that maybe there. there. Let's see what that looks like. Alright, well it looks kind of messy, I guess you could say, but it's going to be okay. So the middle bit is black, fill it in black, just there, and maybe have, I think it was a green, so I'll have a darkish green. Oh shit, no, that's wrong. No, that's not dark enough at all. Boom. Boom. Take it back to black. A razor to... Oh crap, I've done that wrong. We have to cleanse it all up. Yeah, this is a new layer that I didn't use, unfortunately. Right, so you got the brush. Make this black. Nope, I'm the wrong way about it. God damn it. I'd like totally hit a blank wall. Alright, like that. Get the green. Create some form of circle there on each end. Should add a, yeah, put a little bit of green on each end. And boom. There you have that. You have your head. And which is transparent, however, as you can see, there are bits of stuff that need cleaning up. So here on this shadow layer, or the highlight layer even, yep, you're going to want to <coughs> have a half decent size, rub out anything you can see. Just because of the layer mode, you couldn't see it over the white layer. But yeah, so clean up as you can. Another option is to do this, so you click all the layers, so shift click all the layers, draw a square as close around it as you can, select, select inverse, hit the delete key, and boom, um, that basically gets rid of anything out of that area, and then whilst you sh shift click, 
you're going to click Command J or Control J, which will duplicate it all. I'm going to click Merge Layers. Right click Merge Layers, so it merges them all into one, but you have them all separate as a backup in case you need to change anything. Because once you've merged them, you can't edit the separate layers. So you've now put it all into one image. And what I tend to do is double click it, click Stroke. And we'll have it on the outside. Uh, you see this causes a lot of problems. Um, yeah. However, we don't really need much of a stroke. Because we already do have a stroke. If you can get a stroke to work, then that's cool. Literally, all you need to do is go around with the razor tool. And clean it up. Try and make the stroke look as smooth as possible and it follows the head shape and whatnot um, a bit like this but to save problems I'm just gonna get rid of that because yeah that's a nine good I think that looks okay that's it so we're not having stroke but the other one so you want I normally have an inner shadow on uh, so the light is coming from this way maybe on up the how much it is how f distance maybe the choke and etc uh, what else? Where are you? I want to say, why is that not? If I did colour overlay normally, that would show an overlay somewhere. Ah. Uh, so you have this here. So the shadow is actually the wrong way around here. I want it more this end, maybe. Maybe it's at the bottom. Or maybe not at all, but that's up to you. It just defines it a bit more, but we have got a nice looking head here. Then, what else do I add? I normally add a drop shadow. So this is then behind. Yeah, no, we don't want it in a shadow. Screw the in a shadow. Doesn't work for this lighting. Because this is, oh wait, no. We can use it in a shadow but don't use a, gl a global light this is its own light right yeah so make sure you check that because what it's doing is this inner shadow uses the same angle as the drop shadow but for our image we want the shadow to be here and I want the shadow to be here however when it's this way it doesn't seem to be working like you can preview where the shadow is here but yeah basically using not global light works because this is here this is here so yeah uh, basically acts as its own maybe pick it up a bit turn the spread down low and the size distance you don't want it too far that looks cool looks clean it's hardly tell what well, you can't see it but it adds a bit of definition to the emote when you look at it then in fact I've just realized I have done something wrong the I forgot to color the <laughs> eyebrows in I keep forgetting the eyebrows I don't know what it is anyway Forget about the eyebrows, let's carry on. So this is pretty much it. We're zoomed in at 500% at the minute. If we zoom back to 100%, that is what it, it will kind of look like. That's like better resolution. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna save it. I'm gonna save it as a PSD. For now we're gonna call it um, Twitch Emote uh, PSD. Right, save, boom, that means you haven't lost your work.
Right, there we go. I'm gonna go to save as. I'm gonna call it Twitch Emo 112. And we're gonna change it to PNG. Save. Okay. Now when saving it as a PNG, make sure there is nothing behind it. Make sure the background is checkered. Uh, if you have a white layer at the background, which is sometimes default, just make sure you make it invisible or delete it, whatever. Alright, so now we have this image that's good down to, where is it, slot nut emote. So these are some emotes that I've been playing about with, some of them are not the best. <laughs> so then basically we've got this, so if you're on the Mac, what you're going to do is, and duplicate the layer and it could be close for windows so we've got a another copy of the image which is just the png file which is not editable in photoshop i'm going to call it 28 we also want a 56 one so we'll do that as well so we'll go uh, duplicate rename it rename it to 56 okay so you got the 112 don't touch that Double click on the Twitch mark, which will open up Preview, which is built in for Mac. And that is a full size. So for Windows viewers, hopefully it looks somewhat like it. But on Mac, you go to Tools, Adjust Size. Make sure it's on Pixels, Pixels, Inch. Um, well, it's just these two that you're changing. You change that to 56. The other one will change automatically if you've got the keypad. Otherwise, yeah. So 56, OK it will get smaller, press the X, it will automatically change, you can't really tell much of this in between those two, the quality is not that much different, open up this one, this is full size again, adjust size, take it to 28, ok, it will go super small, press X, and this will be pixelated, you've got to see that's pixelated, right, and there you go, there are your free emotes, uh, the Twitch subscriber, if you're doing them, or if it's for yourself, you uh, submit them. Um, only Twitch partners can do it, but yeah. Um, so now to test it, so if you want to test it, um, like maybe if you want to do some trial and error to make sure there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, a good way to tell is by just double clicking it and making sure there's no little bits around it that you couldn't see before, um, because this is transparent on a grey background so yeah so then what you're going to do is you're going to go to imager uh, imager.com you're going to upload an image browse from your computer you're going to choose the 28.png alright and you're going to start the upload I apologise for the train and you've got your remote you're going to click the direct link email and I am that ends in .png and you command and copy that. You go over to a Twitch chat, you type in an emote in chat, a random one. Make sure you're on Google Chrome. Go to inspect element when right clicking on the emote. It'll open up this over this highlighted stuff. Double click where it says source static da 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 it'll say the kappa emote is 25 by 28 so that's actually not right dimensions but yeah you can just double click it it'll highlight it all press command v or control v to paste it in press enter and the emote will change to what it is just here so this is the emote right now and uh, if you want to show anyone it you can just um gaiazo it and screenshot it and whatnot. So yeah, so that's it. Um, obviously, Kappa won't show as anyone else for that. But basically, and if you re refresh the page, it'll change. But it's a temporary way to fully preview an emoticon. So yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And I'll see you guys later.